this is like six, and Brian started out in comedy because Greetings and the sequel to Greetings was Hi Mom. We were in, all in Hi Mom together too. And they were like black comedies. And then, of course, who knew that Brian would move on to his decision to be so just like Hitch, Hitchcock right. kind of guy. So, but those were both those movies were improvised, and I loved improvisation almost so, entirely. Almost entirely improvised. I mean, Brian said, "Here's the scene," so he would he would know. In fact, I have the script of Greetings somewhere, and it's all just page. The scene is she goes here and she she steals a book, and then he tells her it's okay to meet him later. So we. We put in the dialogue. We, improv we improvised all the dialogue. I mean, he would have the scene sketched out with the scene, and so both films were totally, really kind of improvised, which was kind of interesting that we we worked that way. And I loved it. I actually loved. I, lo I loved that kind of freedom they gave you. Yeah. And so that's where I, that's my, that that's was my beginning was with Brian De Palma. Incredible! I can't believe it. Yeah. I mean, this is honestly. I mean, Tanya, like I said. Reading about it and going back, and you know, right from the beginning, and then getting all these acting teachers and getting your film experience and getting all these big names working with all these people. What's the biggest misconception about Hollywood? What do you have to say? What do you have learned in terms of your experience in films? I think the biggest misconception is that it's just all glamorous and it's all fun and. I think some of it is, but it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of work in terms of sitting around and waiting for the call the next day. Are you going to work the next day or are you not? Is that going to be, is the, your scene changed around to when you don't know when? Mm -hmm. So you have to constantly prepare yourself for the scene. Because, and I think a lot of it is that you just, it's just a lot of work. What people think of as glamorous is the premiere afterwards. If you have a premiere, everybody dresses up, everybody looks beautiful, you're walking down the red carpet, you're, you're just, you look fantastic, but really you've got, like when I worked on Deer Hunter, for example. Yes, I wanted to ask you about uh, that. I uh, love that movie. We had 18-hour days in the middle of Cleveland, in the middle of this heat wave, Summer. 118, no air, kind of, no air conditioning, conditioning yeah. and it was, it was, they were long, arduous, Days that required every inch of your stamina that you had for, for the camera, for dancing in the wedding sequence, which my dress never got dry because they tried their best. And so a lot of it is, it you, you have this moment where you just want to do it, and that's what gets you through it. You just you want to do it. You want to do the work. You want to be the best you can. But it's a lot of energy. It's, it takes, you have to just kind of pace your energy. In a movie like The Deer Hunter, I you really it. couldn't pace it because you were physically moving on the wedding, this and that or whatever. But what was nice about The Deer Hunter, which I loved, is it was such a collaboration. Collaboration. That you and it, it, there were no star egos. Really? There was none? no, there were no, none, none, none Bobby that. set the course. He was just, you know, there for the work. He was there to do the work. Michael Cimino was the best. Yeah. He was great. Director. 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 And, um, and he loved his actors, which is great, because a lot of times directors don't always love the actors. And he was loving the actors. He trusted us. He, under, he understood, like I said, what I was, he was a director's actor, do you think? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And he, and you can see it with the you approach. You can see it. You can see it. Right? Oh, thank you. You yeah. can sense it. It's, it's something that you can sense when the director and the actor, when, they, when he knows or when she know the actor's craft and the way that they just come together. Yeah. It's, it's so that pure. was that was a great 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 time great really time. even though it was physically a, a grueling time because we were we were on the set so many hours we had so little sleep but but all the weddings in it was so <laughs> beautiful and all the actors they seen it I couldn't and Christopher Walken did yeah. I and John Savage I had my little I was in love with him quite a few years ago in my head when I seen it at Deer Hunter I fell in love with John Savage. Yeah, well, he's easy to fall in love with. He's a sweetheart. Right, he seems to be a he's very a, nice man. He's a nice, sweet, lovely man, and still a good-looking man. He's still a good-looking man? I, I ran into him a couple of years ago, and I said, he's just as handsome as ever. So, yeah, he's... Very oh, gifted. Yeah. Meryl Streep, what do you have to say back then? Uh, well, Meryl was just starting out. I think this is her second movie. She'd yeah. done Julia. Julia, Julia, Julia. This is like second movie. So she was 
great. Everybody was like, no, nobody, I mean, I don't think any of us realized that Meryl was going to become the huge star that she became. I mean, yeah. she was just one of the actors. We were, we looked, close all group of, of actors you. and we were all like in this together and we were we really all liked each other very much. Yeah. Christopher Walken was the one that I was Yeah. This, the yeah. scenes and when they go and he comes back and the scene and the, when the when they're playing the Russian Yeah, the roulette. Yeah. Roulette. Very it's, powerful, it's powerful, 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 powerful scene. Powerful movie. Powerful yeah. movie. Let's talk about mommy. Mommy, 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 mommy dearest. Mommy Dearest was my four-month journey on this film. Right. And in the book. The, this that's is what we're the, talking that's about. That's the diary. I'm yeah. sorry that we're going back to the book now, but like I said, I'm interested in you. This is, this is the unadulterated version of what happened during the filming of this cult classic. Right. And the reason it's, it, it is is because it's kept in real time. I mean, I journaled it. Every, every, every day, day, whatever was happening, even when I wasn't on the set, what was happening. So it was like a four-month journal of that time. And I think people are responding because they're getting a sense. Somebody said, I feel like I lived with you on that set. And that was my whole, um, I'm glad they got that from that because it is kind of a living thing. Right. And I started that, it's the only diary I've ever kept other than, you know, my actor's notes are different. Mm -hmm. It's like actor's notes. Um, but it's, I started because I was having a real uh, challenge in my personal life. My husband is was a wonderful, brilliant Richard, actor, Richard Bright. Richard Bright was having substance abuse problems. Mm -hmm. He was. Um, you talked that about. Yeah, in your I book. talk about it in the book because yeah. I journal it. It's in my diary. Right. I couldn't not journal it. Right. And then f the chaos that was created by Faye Dunaway on the set was um, was so between my life and my and my set life, I was really having problem I was I was uh, so I thought so I started journaling and that sort of helped me it was like there's your way out yeah you, yeah yeah it was like it kept, it kept my balance mm -hmm. kept for your that. sanity going yes it kept my sanity exactly exactly uh -huh. so that's why I wound up with a diary and the diary was written really never to be published I, I never intended to ever publish it or make a book of it the only reason I published it is because the, the, the film, Mommy Dearest, has become such a cult classic Huge. that all of a sudden, about three years ago, really, I found that, that people are interested. There's, nobody has kept a, nobody kept a record of what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, although uh, Faye Dunaway is now writing her version of it because she called me up earlier this year and wanted me to come and help her write her book. No kidding. And, and Are I you thought, going to? No, 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 no. I mean, first of all, she didn't. I said to her, "Well, just buy my book, and you can kind of reference the what happened." Okay, so we continue okay. the conversation yes, between yes, you and me. Yes. We have a technical difficulty. We wanted to make sure that whatever we're talking uh -huh. about is recorded. Yes. So now we're back in business. What were we? Tanya, I don't even remember. Uh, where were we? We, we, were we covered so about, much. We covered so much. Oh, we're talking so about Faye Donovan, the yes. entire sense of fear. And, and the, the, the sense, Dearest. because when you create that sense of fear, really it's abusive to the people that you're working with. Right. Because they're, they're and that's, I think. You're walking on eggshells. You're walking on eggshells. And I think that's what I capture with all the different, I call it my cast of characters, because it's bigger than just Faye. It's, it, it's, the, it's the whole 
it takes a bunch of people to make a movie. Right. And everybody is valuable. It's of not course. just, I mean, Faye is a wonderful actress and she was wonderful in the part. But it, it takes more than just one person to make the movie. Right. It, it, if you don't have the team behind you and team really pulling for you, that was the difference between Deer Hunter and Mommy Dearest. In, right. in Deer Hunter, we pulled together. And in Mommy Dearest, we, everybody was walking on eggshells and terrified. Yeah, but it, Except for Irene Sheriff, who the five-time Academy Award-winning costume designer she walked, walked off halfway through the movie and she said, I'm, I'm not done. putting up through this bullshit. Uh, basically, that's and she said, I'm done. I'm, I've never walked off a set before in my life, but I'm gone, and I watched her walk off, and I, I really, my heart, my heart went really, did pangs, because I, I loved her. Mm -hmm. She was an amazing woman. She mm -hmm. was like a classy dame. I never even called her Irene. I would call her Miss Sheriff, because she was, she deserved it. She deserved that respect, where with Faye, I would just call her Faye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I guess, like I said once yeah. again, there's a lot of misconceptions, what we know, what we don't know, what we yeah. say, what we're not supposed to say. This show is about trying to be as real as I can be. Um, there's no sense of like, uh, I want to look good, I want to look right, or I want to look accepted. I think everybody deserves to be treated with respect. And all of us, at the end, we're human beings, and we have a lot to say. You know, and this is your input, this is your experience, this is, you're not making this up. You went through good and bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what they call it. <laughs> I mean, you've been through uh, trenches. And in terms of movie making, you've seen it. This is your life, right? What we're talking about, this is mm -hmm. your life, this is your yes. acting career, this is your choices, and this is your experience. So obviously, Mommy Dearest is such a big, iconic movie. Do you ever? Expected to be this big. Never expected to be this big. I, I when I left that show, I thought it was uh -huh. it's a good good movie, but you know, never expected it to take off like it did. It was, I and I don't think anybody did. I don't think anybody did. The producer, the director, nobody. So it's one of those things that you can't predict, you can't shape, you can't make it happen. Right. It just took a life. The first week, after the first week, it took a life of its own. That was it. Right. And the whole embracement about the gay community with the film, it's, they it's love it. It's huge with the gay community, huge. So, I mean, they know all the lines. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah. I go, I go, wow. Okay, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's right, I said that. I, it, thanks for reminding me, you know. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, incredible. It's, it's really incredible. It's incredible. So you stay, you're not close to Faye Dunaway, no. would you say? You stay away from each other. Yes, 30 years until the phone call helped me write my book. Really? <laughs> and it surprised you? That it call? Just shocked me. I was, I was literally, I, you know, when you people say you have a jaw dropping moment, yeah. I literally went, huh? <laughs> my, my jaw literally dropped. Oh. You know, I thought that's what they mean by jaw dropping moment. It's like totally, totally out of the blue, totally unexpected. Yeah. Totally like, why would you call me 30 years later to help me write? Because she's got a book deal, that's why. That's the reason why. Yeah. But it's interesting too when you're saying the scene in the funeral that you were expecting from her to be with you during your scenes. Yes. Right? Yes. Let's talk about that, what you learned from other great actors. Give it a close up. You mentioned about that, how. Oh, John how Wayne. How with John Wayne? Oh, yeah. John Wayne was amazing. He was just. Because I heard that he was not such a nice guy from other. He, he was. People. The, the, the few days I spent on the set with him, he was the most gracious, wonderful person. Mm -hmm. he, he was, it was like you were a guest in his home, basically. He was, he was the person that set the tone for everybody. It was relaxed, it was like uh, respectful. respectful, and he was the only star that I've ever been around or worked with that in, after the master take, he turned to the director and said, there was a young actor working with him, he said to the director, Give him the close-up. And he just walked away, and he, he loved to play chess, so he had a person on, on playing chess on playing chess with him. Okay, uh -huh. But he just went, played, and he, but he had the grace and the, really the star that he was to say, you know, give him the close-up, let him get a break. Yeah. Let him, I let him get I thought about your words when I was um, watching this movie with, with uh, Julianne Moore, Still Me. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've seen it. I have seen it. Yeah, it's but wonderful. There's a scene when it's a wonderful film, but there's a scene when she has with the cleaning lady who comes in. God, I love to clean. It's another topic, but there's a scene that she had with the cleaning lady, and 
the, the camera is always on her face, her reaction. Yes. Why not give one single shot for the actor who's coming in to help you to do your work? I mean, I don't understand I, what I, I totally get it. I totally get what you're saying because I, I learned that lesson from John Wayne, and I said, if I ever had the chance to do it, to do it and I got the chance in Amityville too with uh, Danny Yellow Jr., who played the handyman, the cleaning man that comes in to check on the flies in my basement. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I said, this is my moment. Because a lot of times, you know, if you're not the, the star of the film, you don't get that moment. Mm -hmm. So that moment I said to the director, Damiano Damiani, give him the close-up. Close and he got the close-up because of that. I thought, this is what they did in the 30s and the 40s and 50s movies. This is why these movies are so rich, because the smaller characters Capture got everything. a close-up. Right. And you got a sense of the whole life, not just these the stars, but the movies were great because you had your Thelma Ritters, you had your people that you didn't know who they were, but they had these wonderful faces. And you got a sense of whether he was the butler or the chauffeur or the waiter or something. You had that sense right. of these people. Right. And today, you don't have that. You, you, you don't have, you don't that. have that. And it's a, it's a huge loss. It's a shame. And why can't the stars say... You know, give it, take give it. Give it. And I had this. I had another chance when I was doing a movie called Double Jeopardy. They changed the name of it. Uh, it was a movie of the week with Fred Forrest and myself. Brittany Murphy played my daughter. Uh, where this this other the detective that comes and gives me the bad news. Fred Forrest and I are in the doorway. Comes and gives me the bad news that my daughter's died. All I did was say to him, to the director, here. I want him to be on camera with me, giving giving me the thing, because she was going to shoot him from the back of the head. Right. And I said, let me just move you around. Good for you. So you, you and I will be in profile, so you'll get on camera. Now, he just about cried when I did that. Yeah, afterwards. he's moving. Because yeah, I, he, otherwise he was going to be the back of the head. Why should he be just the back of the head? But you know how many actors are, not only in New York, actors everywhere, because this is a craft, it's a difficult business, difficult art form, wherever you go. Obviously, everybody wants to come to New York because everybody wants to make it. This is the city. This is the center of the universe. But bottom line, acting takes place everywhere. And there's great actors everywhere. There are great artists, men, women who are directing, writing, doing plays. Why everybody's so obsessed to get the close-up, to get the break, to get the, your foot on the, uh, the door, what do they call it? We have a word for that in Spanish. Uh, but to get your food at the door and just go mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. and get your business mm -hmm. and get your name and how can you make your name bigger? How can you get all this director's attention? How can you, how can you, how can, how can I, me, 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 me. Uh, how do we change this, Rutania? Because it seems like it's getting worse. The it's getting stars worse. are getting. It's getting worse. It's all about, it, it becomes how so egocentric. It? It's, it's all about them, them, them. And it takes away from you know, it, it, life is not just about me. Right. It's about the rest of the us. The rest of the people the around rest me. The people around Which you. really, if you're open to that, they feed you. These wonderful people feed you. They give you ideas. They give you. If I do a scene with you, Sissy, yes. I want to do a scene with you. I don't want to be it about me. My God, that's boring. Yeah. I mean, but if it's about the two of us, that's yes. interesting. Or if, if, if like, uh, the, I, like I say, I, I learned from John Wayne, yeah, share it. So you have another face on the screen. Bring it. It's not just your face on the screen. Because I'm, honestly, if it's just that person's face on the screen all the time, it's boring. I get bored. It's yeah. boring. Yeah, but I wanted to see more. I don't know. I, 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 seen, I follow a lot of the British actors. I, I'm big, big, big with Dench and... We well, she's why she, Judy Dench and Maggie Smith, but Judy Dench especially is like that's like my favorite actress. Yeah. I mean, she's just wonderful. I I love her. I the love, sense I love of like her. what we talked about right before we started that you have no walls up there, that you're accessible, you're wide yeah. open, that you, it's 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 uh, you're a naked soul, like she says. Great actors are naked souls. Um, it's something that is a gift. It's a gift. But I, I, I follow a lot of the British actors. 
um, a lot. Uh, I like all of them. I can't help it. Forget about Downtown Abbey. I'm already a big <laughs> fan of Downtown Abbey, but Maggie Smith and Glenda yeah. Jackson and I Vanessa mean, Redgrave. Gosh. And Emma actors. Thompson, and on and on and on and on and they're on. Great. They're great. You know what? What makes them great? Because you know that they're great human beings. You know that they're great people, and that you just—they don't have that kind of ego no. that that demands constant attention. It's right. like it's almost infantile. I seen a movie with Alan Rickman, directed by Alan Rickman and Kate Winslet, called The Little Chaos. Highly recommended, but that's somebody that you want to work with. Yes, Alan Rickman. Yes, he's, he's, he's wonderful. He's, he's incredible. He's, 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 I, I don't know. He's so clear. Yes, and very so, clear. And he's clear, 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 and he knows. Obviously, he knows actors. I have two things that I want to ask you uh, that I, I, I don't think I covered. Bob Dylan. Knowing Bob Dylan, please, can you bring that experience? Well, Bob Dylan. I did a movie with Sam Peckinpah called Pat Garen, Billy the Kid. Okay. And I think, I think that was his first movie as an actor. Uh, and so we were down in Durango, Mexico, filming on this beautiful Western set. And my first experience meeting Bob Dylan was when he was, we were both in wardrobe, and he was trying on his hats, the different hats that he wanted uh, to wear as a character. So he saw me, and he would, he went, all of our communication was basically nonverbal. I've got to tell you, during the, the whole few weeks I was on. And he would try it on a hat, and he'd go look at me and go, and I'd go, hmm. And he'd, go, he'd, he'd get another hat. And he'd go, and uh -huh. I'd go, and he'd, then he'd try, he tried on about a dozen hats. And so finally we went like that, and he went like that. Uh -huh. Then the rest of the shoot, uh, during lunch when he was there, the days he was there, uh, he would come in and he would sit by me and we would have lunch together. And people thought we were having a big thing. We were not having a big thing. In fact, the reason he came and had lunch with me is because we never spoke. I never talked to him. And he felt comfortable sitting with me because I sensed that he didn't want to talk. Just from the first meeting with the hats. It was right. all like, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. um, get like that. So, <laughs> I, uh, so that was my two or three weeks with Bob Dylan was that, that and he was very private, very uh, shy, shy and yeah, at that time shy. in his life. Yeah. And uh, and so our, our communication was when we just eating dinner and nodding and, you know, like that, nonverbal. Nonverbal. <laughs> but the energy, I was kind of curious about the energy because he's obviously another icon, an oh, American he's, yeah. icon. And I wanted to sense what was your energy when, when you saw him. This is quite a journey. Once again, a lot of films, a lot of movies. I want to ask you about um, The Last Icon. Oh, well, the last tycoon was my when uh, Ilya Kazan, Ilya Kazan. That's yeah. how he really pronounced his name is Ilya. Ilya Kazan, Ilya Kazan um, hired me to do uh, the secretary, when the one that is is the quiet one in the back that's in love with with Bobby Dylan, Bobby Dylan, Bob well, De Niro's well, character, well. and um, and I I Ilya was a person that when I first. Saw when he had me in for the interview, it was just him in the room. Right, how intimidating! No other, no producer, no casting, just him. And it was a long room, so when you walked in the door and walked over to him, he you had this feeling that he just took you in, he really just took your whole presence in. So by the time I sat down, he said, Okay, you're hired. I didn't have to read or anything. He said, you're, you're hired. He said, but can you type? Because you have to be secretary. I said, yeah, I can type. He said, there's the typewriter. Show me. So I went over and I started typing because I had taken a typing class in high school. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so I typed and I, then I said, oh, but I'm making a lot of mistakes, Mr. Kazan. And he said, don't worry. You, you look like you can type. You're fine. You're hired. I'll see you on the set. Just like that. And he was a director that had such respect to the actors. He loved his actors so much that you did not, it was him and you on the set, and the people were very quiet, they were respectful. He had a crew that was taught to respect the actors. And when he talked to you, he talked to you very intimately. Mm -hmm. He went over and talked to you very quietly, mm -hmm. so he didn't scream or yell in front of you, in right. front of the, you know, everybody. And everybody. so he, but he loved acting, he loved faces. Mm -hmm. I love your face. That's what I love saying. your face. 
-hmm. and and he was into um i mean he he was so confident that he just made up his mind if he if he if he liked you he liked you he would spend with the bigger parts like he he told me later on we became friends because i became very good friends with his good wife, wife. Uh -huh. so he told me he said he would just take people out for lunch he would spend dinner with them he'd go for a walk in the park with them and then he decided he made up his mind that that person was right or not right he didn't he didn't read people yeah but, but that's a confidence that, that comes is, out uh, of that's certain a gift. it's a gift that it's they gift. they knew they knew you and they trusted you see uh, Michael Cimino was the same way. He, he didn't read me. Mm -hmm. he, he, he we talked. Your energy. We, we talked. Right. Uh, Brian De Palma, the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Frank Perry, really the same way, because I didn't audition. I didn't read from. I had a thirty-five minute conversation with him in his living room. Mm -hmm. um, those directors don't exist anymore. <laughs> they no. don't. In fact, you go up now for anything. There's no director. Right. There's no, there's you and, and you have, a, and you little, have a video the, camera and somebody taping you behind there, some assistant, and, and the director's not there anymore. We have lost something. We have yeah. really lost something yeah. today when the director does not participate in the casting. And I mean, they it, set the main stars, but... But they're not there. But, but they're not, for everybody else, they're not there anymore. They're not there to meet you. Right. And that's why it's important to keep writing, to keep producing, to keep putting yeah. your work out there, uh, to keep connecting with filmmakers. They, they're they always creating. There's a lot of people. With this show, I had the opportunity to get to know so many different directors. I bet you do, yeah. It's nice. It's nice because you see the work with Tanya. You see how tough it is to make a movie and to get the actors and to get the money and to get the shot. But this is a community. It is a community. It's, it's a community. It should be a community and yeah. it shouldn't be so goddamn hard. I don't care if you're method, not method. If you come from the actor studio, yeah, I have a lot of friends from the actor studio. I do. I have some other friends. They, they don't want nothing to do with the actor studio. It, there's, a, what, there's not one way. It's it's, not, there's not one it's way. There's not one way. No. There's a lot of different people have different ways of working. Right. I mean, I'm sure Judy Dench has never worked with the actor studio, but she has her own way of working. She's so real and she's so truthful in yeah. whatever she does. And she's and she's naked internally. Yeah. She it's, doesn't have right. that. She's accessible. Yes, exactly. She goes right in. You know, I, I was listening to an interview with Ken Branagh talking about Judy Dench. So this woman, she can... I mean, she says the F word a lot, but I know, <laughs> Judy, we work a lot and we know each other. Yeah. She's a woman who's always uh -huh. trying and trying. Yeah. Yes. And when she doesn't feel good, she wants to do it again. Say, oh, that was horrible. Let's do it again. Yeah. And yeah. this is Judy Dench. Yeah. That's right. That's why she's so great. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's very, very impressive. I think we we share quite a few things. We did, like I said, Rodania, this is my own opinion. Um, I think that y you owe that to yourself. Your life story is your story. This is something that, uh, this is a woman, I see a woman shining. You, you, you have this personality that is wide open. You see somebody who's successful, somebody who's done it. And I've been in the business, like you said, for 50 years. But you made it through it. You, you're a warrior, you're a fighter, you have courage, you're brave. You overcame the impossible. Yeah, once again, your relationship with your mother is, is something that I'm, I'm, for some reason, I'm interested in. Uh, your relationship with your dad, uh, Poppy. Poppy, when I Poppy. finally, when I met my Poppy, Poppy. it was... P-O-P-Y. Uh, P-O-P-I. Yeah, like when, my, my when brother's I, yeah. name. When I finally met him at age of 26, it changed my whole life, you know. Tell because, me about that moment, well, please. Well, you... You realize that for the first time, I, I realized that I had somebody in my life that really loved love. me. Yeah. And that that was a transitional moment because the moment you realize that you were loved, it's very powerful. Do you remember what he said to you, the first thing he said to you? Well, the first thing he said was, he didn't say anything. He just grabbed me and hugged me and held me for like maybe two, three minutes. With the, He had these red roses in his hand. And we, I just felt him and I felt his, how thin he was, I felt his little ribs. And, yeah. um, but you just were embraced. I mean, it was just, there was no question. Uh, that, the so, love. The love, yeah. It was just so strong. And that was a moment, that was really a big moment in my life when I realized that I, ha I had a parent that, that loved me. That was perhaps your biggest, the biggest event of your life besides uh, having your son. Yes, I think so. It is the love yeah. of your life. Yeah, my son clear. is my, 
Yeah. Well, when my son was born, it opened my heart in new ways. I thought my heart expanded. It's like that Dr. Seuss story in The Grinch, when the Grinch heart expands. I said, my heart really doubled it. Like, I thought, oh, my God, I, I, I didn't know that I had this much more love in me. And I think that's what, that's what my son did to me. And I looked at him. I thought, oh, my heart just expanded. It just yeah. got twice the size. Well, son's a terrific actor. He had yeah. a strong presence. Yes, he's the a beard, wonderful He looks a little actor. older. What the hell? He should <laughs> shave it. But he, he should helped you to edit Christmas. this work. He edited He was he editor. He edited well, he was editor of his newspaper at Vassar College, and he, he's really very good at that. He's a good writer in his own. He's a wonderful actor and a good writer. He helped me edit it and put it together, and, uh, and it was really, I'm really grateful to him. Yeah. Like, You're a tough critic with yourself, Tanya, when you see your work, when you see your film. Do you like, do you enjoy yourself when you watching yourself? I, har do you I hardly ever much? watch myself. You hardly ever? No. I never do? Never, hardly, yeah. No. When you see Mommy Dearest, when you flip in, flip in channels, and you're going, oh, wait a second, that's Mommy Dearest. What I, kind I, of, I just, never, I, never, no. no. I mean, you don't stop to watch it, you just I, go back? I actually, for the first time in like 30 years, I watched it when I did a show with Head of Lettuce Halloween at the Bowtie uh, Cinema. Yes. Because I was like the guest, so I was sitting in the back, and I thought, oh my gosh, okay, I, I watch it, <laughs> but watching with Hedda is a different way of watching because she's a comedian and she makes comments during the whole thing. Right. She turns into a comic event, but no, I don't. I don't watch myself. You don't. No, you don't. Do you like to read much? I read. That's what I m mainly do. Is I read. Read. Yeah. Yeah. And so, movies I'm a big and reader. do you go to see I, plays? I do watch I, I watch movies. I watch a lot of movies because I'm on the Academy, so I have to nominate movies. So you go so know everybody. I, I I I watch more movies than, than anything. and right now especially this all these movies are coming out, I'm, be, I'm way behind. So I, they send me DVDs now, so I'll watch them on. And the whole two weeks on Christmas, that's all I do is watch movies because I, I want I, I feel a responsibility that I have to really see these movies so then you know you, you have to vote for them and nominate and vote for them in January and so by the time that ballot comes out I've, I've seen I would say 98 percent of everything 98 percent of everything. Yeah. well number one I want to thank you for thank you making too. the time it was um, people when they come here they have a good time they yes, say, you're wonderful, it's, it's Sissy. Thank you so experience. much. Sometimes Sissy, everybody says, you're too nice, you're too kind, you're too... Well, you, but it's <laughs> just my energy. It's not that I'm trying to kiss me. No, it's who you are. You're but, a loving soul. Yeah, you're a I, loving can, I soul. can be. I'm not here to... I, I don't try to look myself good. My objective is to try to be who I am and trying to be in the moment. And you are. <laughs> you are. You That's are. All. You're authentic. You know, but it's like uh, two things that I wanted to say is that um, you're a brave woman, brave, 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 and courageous. I would love, and I know that a lot of people would love to sit down and read your story. Something that I think that you owe to yourself, you, to your son, um, but to all of us. This is beautiful, it's fun, it's, this is something that you guys, it, it, it's, it's something that you just keep reading and you can't stop reading it. You know, it's like that's, that's when you have a good book, that you know that you're reading and you can't stop reading, you want to finish it. Um, but I, when I was obviously reading your lines, I said, why, uh, why, it's going a little too fast. Oh, what happened to that moment? What happened to that moment? The moment with the father, the moment, you know, when she came to America and then when she went to her first audition and when you should sit down with Liz Strasberg and then with, like it's so much, Rutania, it's so much that you can put in writing that I tell you, you can write a whole autobiography with your work. And I think it's like, uh, it will be a success. Everybody would love to read it. This is something that it needs to be told. And when somebody sends you a message and you said, listen, I." I knew what it's like to grow up or have somebody who didn't love me mm -hmm. or not, not to be. It's a lot of children who need a lot of love. A lot of us were, like you said, wounded or hurt or mm -hmm. broken to a certain degree. So 
Bring th those lines. Bring your life to us. Thank you. You know, after my I'm uh, writing my one woman show, yes. which is I should finish it by next summer. I, okay. It's halfway written, but I, then I got to write the other half, and then I have to you know work with and perform it. Um, so that's my next project, and after that, I might write more on, about my life. But I want to just say that I, I, I use a quote from Jack Kerouac in there, and I want to share it with everyone: is to fall in love with your life, and that's like really important. I think we have to value our life and fall in love with our own life. Yes. And that took me a long time to learn. Say what you know, because I always thought my life was not as important as everybody else's life. Everybody else's no. life was. And then when I when I really took in what Kerouac wrote, when he said, "Fall in love with your life." That really had an impact on me, and I thought, yes, we have to honor our lives. Yeah. Your life is unique like no other's. My life is unique. And we have to fall in love with our own life and honor it. And embrace it. And embrace it and say, you know, this, my life has value. Yes. And uh, Our hearts beat. Yes. We cry. We get emotional. We Listen, I, I just lost my father. It's going to be a year ago that my father passed away. I'm so sorry. Very much living because yes. he's in a different page, yes. Yes. different I world, believe that. And so much alive. I believe that. But it was the biggest event of my life. And it's, it's the heart, it, I cannot even tell you. I have, I, I have my father's ashes. I can't believe it. I, I, I hold him every night, every night. I hold him on my chest. <laughs> this is so hard to believe because you live life and you do what you do. And then you have a loss that changes everything. It changes everything. And you feel like, wait a minute. I thought that I knew about pain. You think you know about pain when somebody breaks your heart or when you feel that you're in the dark, but when you lose somebody as, as meaningful to you, like my father was to me, it changed everything. It does, it does. And um, very grateful, I, I, I try to be grateful and with the Lord above, be present, how we can, my father always said, we have to change the world, we have to make it better. It's too much pain, it's too much corruption. Everybody wants power, everybody wants money. Everybody wants to get ahead. Everybody wants, to, yeah, it's all, we're human. And that's obviously, we're all human. But if we can only try to be there for one another, to yeah. really be there for one another, forget about your ego, forget about what you're gonna get out of it. Just be and give love. The world wouldn't be such a tough place. You know, it's, um, it shouldn't be. And when I was reading your lines, and when I, I felt your pain, even, even though it was, like I said, I wanted to read more. You, to me, like I, I needed to like really stay in the moment and more description. I'm not, forget about, this is not a, a, a like a, you're trying to punish yourself with thinking and, and going back to the moment. But, Stuff that you write here is very moving. It's moving. It, it breaks your heart. And you made it through it. Yeah. So it's something that you know what? This is your journey. This is your life. Bring it on. Write yeah. it down. All of it. I want to read it. I know your son wants to read it. And I know there's a lot of actors who want to read those lines. And the other note is that the acting, the acting experiences that you have with all these great, great teachers like Lee Strasberg, Elia Kazan, um, Stella Adler. You know how many actors we, we, we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to keep moving forward and we need to be inspired and moved. And uh, you have it. You have, the, you have your life, so give it to us. Please don't let anybody tell you ever, oh, you can't do this. You shouldn't do it. Never. Just listen to your heart and listen to your soul and connect to the Lord above. It, at the end, it's all about love. It is. That is the, that's the basic essence. In the end, we all, that's, that's, we, we are all really born into through 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 the higher power yeah. and we are connected to that and we lose that connection we have to get back to that connection yes. 
and it shouldn't be so hard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. You shouldn't, but this is something that, like I said, think about it. I know you have your one woman show coming up. I'm sorry, that my tears, my, thinking about my daddy, it came to me. No, because it's, it, it, you know, the tears are the tears of truth yeah. and love. And, and, and they come because I'm so glad that you had this wonderful person in your life that you loved so much. I mean, he was that loved, loved you. I mean, it's just a, that's a great like, blessing. That's a he blessing. He said every day, he said, I, every day we're born, every day day we die yeah he said one day more is one day less and it, we owe to ourselves yeah. to live better to be better to keep it all because bottom line we don't know when it's going to be a lost heartbeat we have no idea yeah and well the last time i talked to my father i was going to my class with elizabeth kemp and i was doing some work at the seagull and Chanchito, he said, I love you. I'm waiting for my babies, my, you know, he, Valentina Tomas, my, my, my nephews. And, but I just wanted to tell you that you, I, I love you with all my heart. Chanchito, you are my reason, all my reasons. I love you. I adore you. He said, I'll call you back when you're done with the class. And two hours later, I get a text from my brother saying, he vomited blood. We took him to the hospital. I'm devastated, and that was the uh, words that changed my life. And next thing I know, he was three weeks in the hospital. Next thing I know, I lost the main figure of my life, Tanya, just like that. But isn't it beautiful what he said to you? Yeah. I love you, Sissy. Yeah. I love you. I adore you. I adore you. I. Is that, that's he wonderful. He never. He said, I want to make sure every day I show you how much I love you. Smart man. Very wise man. Every day, every Very day. Very wise. He would call me out of the blue when I'm walking. When I, do you, your feet? Do they hurt? <laughs> That's beautiful. Do they hurt? Said, oh no, yeah. Well, can you take a break? Sit down. I, I'm just because he knows that I'm flat, I have flat feet. And but very much holding my father's ashes. They scattered him in the ocean. And I, I said to my brother, just have, I want something left. Don't scatter them all. Just leave me a little, a little piece. Bit. Piece of my dad. It's a piece of your heart. Piece of my heart, my soul. Yep, yep. And I hold it and I, I have those ashes. I have my piggies on my bed and I hold them every night. And I said to myself, love is the greatest gift. Love is what matters. The rest, it doesn't really matter, honestly. I tried to hold to that, and that gives me the strength. But I was, when I was reading your line about your dad, and the first time that you saw him, and the impression, I connected to that, because I, I have my father, and I adore him. He's my reasons. He's all my reasons, but I was so... Oh, she has to write more about it. I want to know more about that moment that it was so important in your life and even in the relationship with your mother too because bottom line is that was your past, that was your journey mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that made you who you are today. This is, this is, I'm pretty sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every day and you said to yourself, <laughs> I'm a happy woman. I, 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 I did good, right? It's Getting there, I'm getting there. When you say, "Okay, I'm I'm using Louise Hayes' technique," where you look in the mirror and you say, "I love you, I love you," I, you know, and and it's like, good, that's right, huh. you know. It it's it's it. It was hard to do at first. It's hard right. to do, but you know what? We have to. We have to start here. We have to start right here, yeah. and then we can do. we can extend it and love that other person. Yeah. Absolutely, it's about love, and yeah. we get a little emotional. But hey, it was not planned. It was not planned. I said I'm going to go in, shoot in, right on, get on it. I'm not supposed, to, you know. But what the hell? Life that's is best, messy. That's the best thing, isn't it? Wonderful. Life is messy yeah. and it unpredictable, is. and it is. and it's a mess, and you hurt, and you cry, yeah. and you use the F word, and you say why people are so upset, why people have so much anger, why actors. I was reading those lines, and I was not surprised to see all these actors, all these mega stars who are so, they have so much ego. When is enough? That's right. 
When is enough? Until when? Until when we are going to learn and say, okay, you know what? It's about the work. Let's serve the playwright, serve the writer, serve the community, serve the director. Let's work together. Let's make some great movies yeah, together. together. Together is the key. You do it together. together yeah. Not me, me, me. Yeah. I mean, it's like I, I was, like I said, I was reading about all these stars, and you mentioned big names over there, and I'm like, that's the prize. That's what I want. That's my legacy. I don't want to be known for somebody who's difficult, somebody who's a bitch, and somebody who doesn't get along with people. So I don't want any of that. I'm not interested. If that is success, baby, I don't want any of it. <laughs> I don't want any of it. Ritania, look at me. I'm telling you the truth. I don't want any of it. Yeah. Right? Don't want to go there either. I don't want to go either there. So we cut it out. This is okay. what it is. We have a wrap. Ritania, you. something you want to say to the camera, number two, this is your time. Thank Please you. shoot. Thank you. I just want to say again, thank you, and thank you, Sissy, and thank you, everyone. And remember, fall in love with your life because you matter. And, and it took me a long time to accept that, but that, uh, yeah. <laughs> love is what matters. Lo love is what matters, and you loving yourself is what matters, too. Beautiful. Well said. <laughs> God, Gloria, that's what we call a rough. I don't know if you roll the credits. I don't know if you're there. Uh, look at my nose is running. This is not good. Makeup it's is all good. messed good. up. <laughs> I was not planned. But anyway, everybody, Gloria, I love you. Thank you for watching. Alex Nacho Guevara. Um, Esteban Quesada Vizcaino, my cinematographer and editor in Costa Rica back home. He's doing wonderful work for me on the weekly basis. I want to say thank you to everybody and keep watching. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. Thank you.